This is NBC 10 News at 6. We begin with breaking news tonight. A verdict has been reached in the trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. Yeah, Derek Chauvin was found guilty on all three charges. The jury found Chauvin guilty of second degree unintentional murder, third degree murder, and second degree manslaughter in George Floyd's death that happened back on May 25th of last year. Chauvin could be sentenced to 20 years in prison just on the second degree murder charge alone. We, the jury, in the above entitled matter as to count one, unintentional second degree murder while committing a felony, find the defendant guilty. This verdict agreed to this 20th day of April 2021 at 1.44 p.m. Yeah, and in the courtroom when the verdict was announced, Chauvin didn't show any emotion or have a reaction. He simply walked out of that courtroom after the judge announced that his bail was revoked. That's right. Sentencing will take place in about eight weeks. And let's take a live look right now at Minneapolis tonight. Uh, people have been gathering on the streets there. This is uh, right outside the courtroom. The governor speaking now as well on the verdict uh, that was found earlier this afternoon. Yeah, at one point, the people who were gathered outside, they were chanting Black Lives Matter and no justice, no peace. And then when the verdict was read in the courtroom, they could also be heard cheering outside. State troopers from Ohio and Nebraska are in the city tonight, making sure troops are on the ground. There's also more than 3,000 National Guard troops, 1,500 officers, and federal agents stationed in the city. Other cities like Chicago were prepping for possible unrest tonight. National Guard troops are also in that city after the governor had asked for them to be deployed. We'll, of course, have more coverage on the verdict tonight on NBC 10 News at 10. And shifting gears now, a Louisiana Senate bill could allow gun owners to carry a firearm without a permit. NBC 10's Brian Briggs shares how two different gun groups in the state feel about these proposed changes. Senate Bill 118 is proposing these changes, and if it passes, gun owners will no longer need a concealed carry permit in the state of Louisiana. The bill still restricts those under the influence of alcohol or controlled dangerous substances from carrying, and you still have to notify an officer you're carrying if you're approached by one. Carriers will still need a permit if they plan to carry beyond state lines. Gun groups across the state of Louisiana have similar views on the bill. The Louisiana Shooting Association is a New Orleans-based organization consisting of individual members and the affiliated clubs which support shooting sports. They say this bill is a constitutional right. We believe that it would be an advancement for the right to keep and bear arms in Louisiana and that it would be in keeping with uh, Article 1, Section 11 of our Constitution which basically requires any uh, regulation of firearms to meet a strict scrutiny standard. Change is a Baton Rouge-based group consisting of Mothers Against Violent Crimes associated with guns. They believe the guns need to stay in responsible hands. I agree that people should be able to bear arms to protect their homes and their families and, you know, their property. But the ones that I feel that we should be threatened by are the ones that get the guns illegally and use those weapons to murder people, rob, and, you know, just to destroy our community. Now the bill is currently sitting in the Senate. If it passes the Senate, then it will head to the House. If it passes them both, then it heads to the governor's office for a signature. Reporting for your weather station, I'm Brian Briggs. Thank you, Brian. Meanwhile, police in New York are searching for a gunman who killed one person and shot two others at a grocery store in Long Island. It happened just after 11 this morning at the Stop and Shop Market. Police say there were about 200 shoppers inside at the time of the shooting. Investigators say the gunman went upstairs to the manager's office and shot three people there. Police say the gunman left the scene with a handgun and there is a massive effort to find him. I heard about six shots, and I've been sitting in the parking lot watching, and, uh, and they put somebody on a stretcher, and they had so many ambulances here, and I saw somebody come out on a stretcher. Police have identified a person of interest in the case. That person is 31-year-old Gabrielle Wilson. Police say Wilson has worked at the Stop and Shop, but it's not known if he is currently employed there. Today in Washington, a Senate committee weighs the state of voting rights in America with Georgia and its controversial new law in the spotlight. Alice Barr has the latest from Washington. 
standing in long lines or voting by mail, more Americans cast a ballot in the 2020 elections than ever before. Following that record turnout, state after state now advancing bills that advocates say will make it harder to vote, especially for people of color. This is a full-fledged assault on voting rights, unlike anything we have seen since the era of Jim Crow. Today, the Senate Judiciary Committee holding a hearing with Democrats seeking to build the case for federal voting rights legislation, zeroing in on new restrictions passed in Georgia, including limits to mail-in voting and added ID requirements. Criminalizes a volunteer handing a bottle of water or food to voters or their children while in line. The law set off furious backlash. Major League Baseball moving the All-Star game out of Georgia. Hollywood Films pulling production. And big corporations from Delta Airlines to Coca-Cola denouncing the changes as unacceptable. Everyone needs to have, have the same underlying uh, rights and access. A top Georgia Republican insisting the new rules expand access and secure elections. In Georgia, we're making it easier to vote and harder to cheat. But as GOP-controlled legislatures from Texas to Florida advance similar bills, critics are accusing them of basing the changes on a broadly debunked lie that there was widespread fraud in the last election. Or you have a better chance of being struck by lightning than finding widespread voter fraud. A Congress shaped by this past election fighting over the ground rules for those to come. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. Last month, the House passed a bill that would overhaul elections nationwide from expanding early voting to automatic voter registration, but it faces stiff opposition in the Senate. Teachers in the El Dorado School District are finally getting a well-deserved pay raise. NBC 10's Gabrielle Pfeiffer spoke with one educator on what this means for current and new employees. We don't get into it because we think we're going to be millionaires. Um, but we hope and that we're preparing the future millionaires in the world. And so um, to be fairly compensated, it's just, it's amazing. It's awesome. A new day has come for teachers in the El Dorado School District. Come July, all certified staff will receive a $2,000 pay raise. They deserve a raise. Every teacher that teaches across the state uh, deserves more money than what they make now. The governor helping with that, increasing the median salary and helping rural districts who can't manage the increase. Curtis has been teaching at the high school for two years now, though she loves the district and has a passion for the work. She he says the race will give teachers the boost they need. I know everybody in my hallway alone either works a second job or has a second form of income. In addition, some teachers will be able to get a signing bonus, including new staff members. We have a $2,000 signing incentive for teachers to come here. We have a $4,000 signing incentive for those in hard to fill areas like science and math. Tucker says they need more staff, not because teachers are leaving, but because new positions are available. He says it's all to make sure your kids get what they need inside the classroom. We want to help students recover some lost learning that we uh, have noticed over the past year and a half. Reporting in El Dorado, I'm Gabrielle Pfeiffer. Coming up on your weather station, how one local organization is making sure the city of West Monroe stays clean. Plus, it's one of the world's biggest floating solar hybrid projects. We'll have the details on this solar farm. That's up next. Much cooler air will push into the region tonight, but in the meantime, sunshine still winning over. And it will make for some pleasant days, but rain chances return Friday, Saturday. Full look at the forecast as NBC 10 News at 6 continues.